tell you, I was excited to come here to Oklahoma. It's my first time in this part of the country, by the way. And um, I'm going to tell you, I hate flying. And, uh, and, I, and guess what? I land up flying all over the country. And I think in the last, oh, about three months, I've been Montana, Connecticut, Ohio, Indiana, Missouri, uh, West Virginia. I've been in a lot of states. And I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you in a little while. But before I do that, I want to get to know you first. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. How many in here are NRCS employees? Ah, uh, in the back. Uh, I'm going to call on them first. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in the back out there. I tell you what. Um, how many here farm? Beautiful. Love talking to farmers better than agency people. Don't get it wrong, agency people. I love my farmers and ranchers. This is where the message really, this is where this message is really going to resonate really nicely with you. Um, how many from Texas? Beautiful. Oklahoma? Whoa, fantastic. Anywhere else I didn't mention, like Louisiana. I'm telling you, I went and had dinner with those Louisiana people. They are one crazy group. <laughs> I'm going back with them. I'm saying. We had a great time last night at the Mexican restaurant. I said, oh, I think they're going to kick us out. <laughs> These cages know how to have fun. <laughs> well, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Let me start off. Arkansas here. Arkansas. Arkansas. I'm sorry, Arkansas. Forgive me. <laughs> Thank you, Arkansas. Thank you. Thank you. Arkansas. Anybody else I forgot? Kansas. Kansas. Yes, Kansas. Beautiful. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I don't have my wife with me. She's my memory. And uh, <laughs> go ahead and keep it straight. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I need that all the time. Um, let me start off. I'm going to tell you, I, I've been working with HC 26 years. I am uh, two years in the Peace Corps. I started my career as a technician. I started off in the southern part of New Mexico. I grew up in New Mexico. I grew up in the Rockies. I'm used to 12,000, elevation of 12, our valley was 6,000 feet. I grew up, our family is from the Colorado area, there's a county called uh, Archuleta County. They try to keep us all on one group, it's too late, we exploded. And one thing, my dad said, son, I want you to do two things in life. I said, yes dad, I want you to work hard and I don't want you marrying your cousins. <laughs> I said, yes sir, and I married a girl from Missouri. <laughs> Life has been fantastic, and uh, I wish she could be with me all the time. She's my best friend, and she's the. And you know what? She's learning a lot about soul health. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, she hears me say, "Well, no, not anymore. Not about microbes. I don't want to hear it anymore." Let me start off what happened here. And I'm going to start off with a little journey here because I'm telling you what. The last seven years, I've had an incredible epiphany. Uh, one of those moments that you have eureka moments. But I'm going to start off, as I started as a technician, started working with an agency down there and designed irrigation systems. I said, look, you know, I need to start going to college. And I, I do things uh, the, the slow way, I tell kids don't do it my way. I decided to go to college, work full time with the NRCS, and go to college at the same time. I told, I told my kids, don't do it that way. I did it that way, and that's why I'm completely gray at the age of 26. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm, I've been worn out hard. I've been worn out hard. Well, then I started realizing, you know, water issues in the night. And guess where the first thing I started when I finished college? Got my degree in ag biology, went to graduate school for uh, soils. And guess where they put me the first? In the Boot Hill, Missouri, with 55 inches of rain in Dexter. And I'm going, oh my goodness. And I grew up in a very dry climate. We stayed there for about a year and a half, went up to the northern part, ladies and gentlemen, became a water quality specialist, and I got a hankering back for the West. Yeah, I can't even watch John Wayne movies and I start breaking down into tears. <laughs> because the first time I come to Missouri, I go, oh, there's so many trees. I'm not used to that. So when I went into, I became a district conservationist in Oregon. Our county was 6 million acres, 300,000 irrigating acres, Two time zones, and it took four hours to cross that county. The Snake River separated Idaho and Oregon. I lived in the Idaho side, had a small farm, and here's where my journey started. As I was going through all this, I'm kind of a slow guy, I'm saying, you know what? We've been putting all these conservation practices, we write conservation plans, and I noticed, you know, the water's still dirty. 
In fact, I remember asking my boss, I said, why is the Mississippi that dirty? And they said, oh my goodness, we, we hire. <laughs> then, but really, I started thinking about those things. And then it really hit me when my farmer right next to me, uh, I was the only non-Mormon in my little street in Idaho, but we're about an hour north, love those people, wonderful neighbors. This farmer of mine, friend of mine, very personal friend, he farmed 600 acres around me. I farm, I had a small acreage, and he would lend me equipment. And one of the things, just before I left and I took the job to the tech center, my farmer friend lost part of the farm. He lost the farm because the input costs were $300,000 a year, ladies and gentlemen, on 600 acres. It was a specialty crop, go alfalfa, lettuce, onions, $300,000 a year. By the time he paid his labor, and that man, if you know anything about them, they're very frugal. Hard-working people, lovely people. Broke my heart. The worst thing about it, there I was with eight years of college, and I couldn't help him. I'm saying, I was disconnected. I realized, but into not writ later, uh, later on, I'm going to tell you some more, but I realized when I left college, I left with a very fragmented view of the soil ecosystem and the whole ecology. My, my view was very reductionist science, very fragmented, and I'm going to talk about that. There I am sitting there watching him, and I did help him save some energy on his pumpkin cost, but his son ended up working with NRCS, ladies and gentlemen. He became, had to be in a realtor appraiser. Now he said he had to sell 200 acres, and 400, he still farms a little bit, but no, not full time. He could not bring his son into the operation. Soil's good, water's cheap there. Pretty much gravity flow, flow irrigation. So here's where it starts. Took, I sold my little farm, I moved to North Carolina, and I'm sitting in the back row. I don't know what it is about us North, uh, NRCS employees who want to sit in the back row. <laughs> and they said, Ray, you got hired at the tech center. You're going to teach soil quality. What? Didn't even know we had a soil quality team. 1995. But I've been in the center since 2004 and 2005. When I'm going to show you today these demonstrations, ladies and gentlemen, six years ago, I could have not explained this to you. I could have not explained this to you. Considering I went to graduate school for soils. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic? So we're going to talk about this. So when I sat in the back row, I'm going, oh my goodness, my conservation light passed by me, and I said, I gave bad advice for the last 15, 16 years. So I'm making up all the bad advice I'm giving you. Today, what we're going to learn, ladies and gentlemen, how to farm in nature's image. That is what we're going to learn, not about forcing it. We're going to talk about landowners that have reduced their fertilizers by 100%. They did their herbicides by 75%. How? By farming in nature's image. I get to go all over the country, get to be exposed to the top farmers. I also get to do, uh, get, get the ability to be able to research and look at all this stuff that we're going to share with you. Today. So we're going to start on this journey. Now what I'm going to ask for you, ladies and gentlemen, the last three rows, you're going to have to come to the side here because I want you to see the demonstration because I never want you to ever forget this. Because when I talk to landowners, I don't talk about grazing, I don't talk about no-till, I don't talk about cover crops, until we talk about this first. I don't talk about tools. Today, we're going to talk about understanding. It's not about tools. It's not about the grazing. It's not about the cover crop. It's not about the no-till. It's about learning how to use your tools and be part of that ecosystem. So please. Seriously, come over the edges here because you're going to have to see this. I was going to project it up in the front, but my projector's not, my little thing's not working. Sharon, would you please ready? Morris. This is called. Uh, we're going to do what you call the slate test. Can you guys see right there? Okay, good. Okay. Now I go all over the country and I collect soils. My garage is full of soils from all over. Sharon, would you stand by? Sit right here. Stand right here. <coughs> Sharon. She's from Texas. I captured her and Morris. And uh, Morris is a district director, and I'm so tickled that he does and serves our people. Okay, what we're going to do is I call, I call this is the slate test. The slate test is one indicator of soil health. 
It is just one indicator, ladies and gentlemen, of soil health. There are many indicators, and we're going to talk about that today, later this afternoon when we go out in the field. But to me, this is one of the most powerful teaching tools when I talk to my donors, <coughs> to Extension, to NRCS, to anybody. We don't go to the talk about tools until we understand this first. Okay. So now, what Sharon's going to do, this is, this is my North Carolina soil. 40-year no-till, has not used chemical fertilizer in 13 years. He uses manure, and he uses um, uh, cover crops. That's it. No chemical fertilizer in 13 years. We're going to talk about him later in the next couple of days. And what she's going to do, I'm going to explain the aggregates, the clods. When I was a kid, we called them clods because we used to throw them at each other. <laughs> and so the next one is conventional uh, vegetable tillage. These farms are the same soils, and they're only a mile apart. The sad thing about it, both farms are only half a mile from Lake Wheatfield, which feeds the, the city of Wheatsville. Okay? This other one is, because I love Louisiana, All right. I got some good Cajun soil that's uh, grown <coughs> under conventional, and this soil, is this next jar here, is uh, sugar cane. They do lots and lots of disturbance, a lot of fertilizer, a lot of herbicide, very high input. Okay? This one also is a Louisiana soil. We picked that up as I was driving with Johanna Pate, uh, the grazing session, we just picked it up in this conventional corn. And this one is another soil that I don't remember. And we'll, we'll I think it's from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> I pick claws up everywhere. <laughs> okay, now, what she's going to do is she's going to drop each aggregate into the, and there's just screen and water. How many of you guys watch the Mythbusters? You remember they say, hey, don't do this, we're professionals? You will hurt yourself. I say do this, and the only thing that will hurt you is your own feelings. Okay? Do this. It's very simple to do. All you do is get and collect dry aggregates. You pick them up in any part of the field, and what you're going to do is collect them. Now, what's going to happen is we want to see which one does not fall apart. A good, healthy soil will not fall apart. This slate test will work on 98 to 99% of the soils. It does not work on all soils because of the mineralogy on it. But it works everywhere. Did this in Alaska, did this in Puerto Rico, done it all over. Okay, now, she's going to drop them in, and we want to see which one holds its integrity. Water in each of these aggregates, there's millions and millions of pore spaces. Water's going to rush in, the force of the water is going to rush in to fill the pore spaces, and we're going to see which is going to be able to withstand that force. Ready? Ready, sure? Go ahead. Drop. Yes, go ahead. Do the glass need to be totally dry? Yes. To yes, you want them dry. Because then you have the air spaces. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. That's, that's the vegetable conventional. All these other conventional. And we're going to do the organic tomorrow. Look at what's going on. I could not explain this years ago. Why is it falling apart? What is things here? Tillage, lots and lots of tillage. No-till, lots of residue, lots of diversity. This has, and these are heavily tilled systems, heavily disturbed. When I say disturbed, they're tilling that soil ecosystem all the time. Oh, by the way, and again, we'll talk about the organics. We'll do this tomorrow again. We'll do it on the organic, where they do a lot of tillage, and the ones with the cover crops. And we'll talk about that later. 